Good afternoon. This is uh, Terry Olson with Playfully Orange and our conversations about arts and culture in Central Florida. My guest today is Matthew Curtis. Welcome, Matthew. Hi. Happy to be here. Now, Matthew, you are, tell us uh, what your position is. I'm programming director at Enzion Theater and the Florida Film Festival. And you have been doing this for a number of years, right? Yeah, over a quarter century now. So I've <laughs> I've it's been involved. Okay. I've been involved with the theater since they opened in 1985, and um, in 1996, uh, I became programming full-time programming director for both the theater and the festival. Well, you have uh, probably seen a lot of films in that time. I've lost count. Yeah, <laughs> I imagine. Well, did um, as a kid, did you think? When I grow up, I'm going to be involved in the film business. Actually, I didn't. I, I mean, I pr back then I probably wanted to be a uh, the point guard of the New York Knicks. You know, growing up, I wanted to play pro sports. I loved soccer. I loved basketball. Uh, my father was sports editor of the New York Post when in my when in my childhood. So uh, I loved all kinds of sports and was exposed to uh, that. So I had no idea i mean i always loved movies and they had a profound effect on me growing up but um yeah I, until really probably until i got to college i had no idea i was going to be in the film industry and did you grow up in new york yeah i did i grew up in the suburbs um rockland county new york which is near the new jersey border people have heard of you know it's kind of in the area of West Point and Bear Mountain and places like that. So I grew up in uh, Orangeburg and Spring Valley and Havistraw um, and then lived in central New Jersey for a couple of years before my first time I settled in Florida, before I went back up to New York to work uh, as an adult. What brought you to Florida? The first Original, time? The first time, yeah, my dad was, uh, as I said, he was a uh, sports editor of the New York Post and he got a job on the editorial board the Miami Herald, and this was um, early 70s. And um, so the whole family moved down in the station wagon with the cat in the back seat and moved down to North Miami Beach. And uh, I went to high school in North Miami Beach and then college in Sarasota before I headed back up north to work, start working in the film industry. And what, what, how did you get started there? Uh, I ran the new college film series, actually. Uh, as I said, I always loved film growing up. I had no idea I was going to be in the industry. But um, when I got to new college, I kind of took over running the film program there and uh, just totally fell in love with it, made a lot of connections with distributors uh, and uh, headed up north after school to start working in the film industry and distribution. What brought you? But what brought you back to Central Florida? Central Florida was uh, had a kind of mid '80s, late '80s. Uh, both my grandparents, who lived in the Bronx, had passed away, and I wasn't going to leave New York while one of them was still alive. So, because uh, they weren't going anywhere. So, uh, once they passed away, uh, my then wife and I were, you know, hitting thirty and thinking about starting a family and um, just decided to get out of the rat race. Uh, she was working for a big eight accounting firm and just, you know, killing herself was ridiculous. <laughs> All the travel, the 80 and 90 hour weeks, we decided that was not for us. And uh, while we still had, uh, still had our youth, we wanted to go somewhere else and start thinking about starting a family. So that's what we did. And we were, you know, we had family in Washington DC and San Francisco and central florida and um we kind of weighed the pros and cons of all those places and saw what we could afford in all those places and it was no contest so thank god we ended up here well in the 80s orlando and the area was growing but it was a very different place than it is now absolutely what were your thoughts when you came here uh, actually, I was a little depressed when I first got here. Um, you know, I hear I was working in the film industry in New York and traveling to Telluride every year, Labor Day weekend, and attending the New York Film Festival and 
eating at the most incredible Italian restaurants, et cetera. And um, I love New York, the hustle and bustle, and um, just love the museums and the music and everything about it. And so we first got down here. It was a big period of adjustment. And, um, you know, I was very happy. I could still, um, I you know, once I started working with Enzion, I could still travel to some festivals and things and uh, go back to New York and go out to Sundance and go up to Toronto and things like that. But uh, it's changed a lot, obviously, and for the better. I mean, it's the, um, the change in everything about Central Florida has been amazing. So, you know, the cult from the culture to the sports teams, to the educational opportunities, uh, to the arts, uh, which obviously most important to me. Um, yeah, it was, um, we've adjusted. So. Well, in all your time with the, the Florida Film Festival and the Enzian, what have been some highlights? Oh, that's really hard to say. I mean, every year, it's so funny because every year we do the festival and it's, you start out in the summertime taking submissions. You say, how are we going to do this again? And uh, by some miracle, by springtime, we put, we do the festival and we hear it's the best one yet. So, um, I mean, we've had some amazing things over the years from the opening night screening of Blair Witch Project to, uh, you know, 50 Feet from Stardom with, with um uh, celebrities here and the director to many years ago, we showed a film about slam poetry by Paul Devlin called Slam Nation, where the people in the, the audience had no idea that we had some of the slam poets in with us. Uh, we didn't announce that they were going to be there. And uh, this one particular artist, Bo Sia, who's an actor and spoken word artist, he actually, you know, it's like the film ended. He ran out on stage, we turned on the lights, and it was like the Beatles hit the stage. It was the reaction was so amazing. And uh, you know, it's it's moments like that that make it all worthwhile and uh really, you know, make it thrilling to do what we do. That's great. And uh as you look around, uh we've a number of other film festivals uh going on now. Uh, I don't think when you came, the Florida Film Festival was probably oh. the only film festival around. <laughs> That's true. There was a handful uh, in the state, and now it's there's dozens in every city, it seems like, and municipality. So it's incredible how it's uh, the growth in festivals. And, um, you know, it it's, it's, serves its purpose, and it brings a lot of smaller films and independent films to communities that otherwise would never get a chance other than to, you know, watch, stream them and watch them online, uh, which has obviously changed over the years also. So, Well, if there were one thing that Central Florida you think needs to have, what would it be? Oh, that's interesting. If there's one thing we need. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, I actually, that's a tough question. I, I'm, I don't know. Uh, or, or one thing that we're missing. One thing we're missing: um, a baseball team and a football team would be okay. great. Maybe would your be, sports comes in. All right. Yeah, yeah. Finish this. You know, we actually, obviously, we have a professional basketball team and we have a, uh, a professional soccer team, um, but um, I wouldn't even be greedy and say we need a hockey team also. I'd be very happy with a baseball team or a football team here. So, all right. And um, is there one thing you're looking forward to with the NZN or the Florida Film Festival? For now, just the um, the increased opportunities to bring people in, uh, have people start coming back to the movies, which is, you know, it's it's been a, a process obviously since COVID and uh, things are coming back, but very slowly. And uh, this year's festival was light years ahead of the previous two, as far as uh, filmmaker attendance and, and audience attendance. And it was kind of great to see and very invigorating and uh, people were happy to be back, but it's still a process. And so we're just looking for that continued growth and, and the audience and, 
the outreach of the festival around in the community. Well, thank you for being the, uh, the so it's a, it's a party, the NZN itself, as well as the Florida Film Festival. And you're the person that pulls all the elements uh, together for the basis of that. So thank you for doing that. I hope you'll be continuing to do that for a while. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're very proud of what we've accomplished. I mean, it's uh, it's been a long slog, but after 20 26 years full time. And uh, obviously, I've been involved with the theater since they opened because in 1985, I was renting them movies from the company I was working for in New York. But um, it is nice to be recognized. You know, IndieWire is called Enzion, you know, maybe the best art house in America. And the Florida Film Festival has been in, listed in the top 10 festivals in the world and Chris Core's Ultimate Film Festival Survival Guide editions and uh we're the only oscar accredited festival in the state of florida still in three different shorts categories and one of only a couple dozen in the world which i don't think people realize and it's kind of shocking but uh one of only a couple dozen in the world accredited in all three oscar shorts categories uh that you know live action animation and documentary well thank you for talking with me today i want to thank you for watching Join us uh, every Thursday afternoon for a conversation with someone about arts and culture in Central Florida. Also on Tuesdays, I do Diverse Orange talking about art um, diversity here in Central Florida. Thanks, everyone. Thanks a lot. Good talking to you.